Hi guys. So, today's video is... Well, I, I guess it should be obvious. A while ago, I did a video over the worst Monster High dolls. It was fun, we had a laugh, we had a good time, and I figured, you know, Bratz is kind of the next logical step, right? However, I was not in a, a big hurry to make this video, really, for a few reasons. One is that I feel it's just a lot more difficult of a question to answer. You know, Monster High had some pretty bad dolls. We know this. Again, I made a whole video over it. But those dolls are also pretty distinctly bad, if, if that makes any sense at all. Whereas Bratz, I think, is just a lot more consistent. And I mean that in a good way, obviously. It's pretty easy to pick out certain Bratz lions that are, like, really standout amazing lions, but a lot more difficult to just pick out ones that are uniquely bad in some way, especially if we're talking about the original run. Some are definitely better than others, but the baseline, like, average quality standard of a Bratz line is already pretty high. Number two is that the Monster High girlies, I feel like we're pretty good at laughing at ourselves. You call our dolls ugly, and for the most part, we're like, yeah, we know, what about it? Or even, like, the Rainbow High girlies, they're like, yeah, she's hideous, that's why I love her, obviously. But the Bratz girlies... So, this is very much not the first video of its kind. I've seen other creators do lists of the worst Bratz dolls, and I have watched those creators get absolutely torn to shreds, just not even in a funny way, in a way that is genuinely, honestly, kind of scary. Like, they, they just do not play around. Which is exactly why I'm formatting this video like I did my Monster High one, where I requested the help of my followers and subscribers, and I asked them, what are the worst Bratz dolls? Or rather, the worst Bratz line is how I phrased it. So if you take issue with any of the dolls that appear in this video, I'm sorry. That's not my fault. You'll just have to take it up with my subscribers, okay? The only thing I did was make a spreadsheet. And also made this video, actually, so I guess I do have to take some of the responsibility. I got around, I think, almost 200 responses in total, which is a decent sample size, I think. A little less than what I usually get when I put these forms out, but again, it's just a very difficult thing to answer, so I kind of foresaw this happening, but it is a decent amount. And I did specify, like, you could respond with anything, spin-offs, reboot dolls, anything that was under the Bratz umbrella was fine. So I crunched the numbers, I aggregated the data, I did math, and I deduced the top 10 responses, which I will now relay to you. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the 10th highest response, which made up 3% of the total responses, and this kind of surprised me a little bit, but it was Bratz Ponies. Y'all, what did the ponies do to you? This surprised me because, for one, I did not know that the ponies left a big enough impression on anyone for them to be considered the worst Bratz line. Like, I don't know if I agree with their placement here, actually, and it's not that I'm a big Ponies fan, it's just, I don't know, I don't think they're doing anything wrong, I guess. But let's see what some of the responses said. I did leave a little space just for, like, optional comments. Utterly vile. Okay. Work. The lack of accessories made them really boring. Also, I'm not a horse girly, but the overall designs of the ponies did them really dirty. I guess I can kind of see the reasoning here. Compared to, you know, a standard Bratz doll, or even a Bratz baby's doll, they're not super exciting. They're very much just like a little figurine, more than they are like a doll. And I also admit they do look absolutely nothing like horses or ponies. They are just like the vague 
idea of a horse. So I suppose they wouldn't really resonate with the, you know, the hardcore horse girls. But I still don't know if I would call them bad. That just seems a little harsh. But also, it's, like I said, Bratz simply doesn't have a lot of uniquely awful, repulsive, hideous dolls, right? So in the absence of anything else coming to mind, I can see why someone would instead zero in on the ponies. Yeah, so... There's not too much to say about them, I guess. They're ponies. I think they're fine. Uh, 3% of you very much did not. Number 9, which received 3.6% of the total responses. Neon Runway. So this line is from 2012. If, if you could not tell just from looking at them. And one thing I love about Bratz is that any era they're in, any decade, any year, they're gonna have their finger on the pulse of fashion. They're absolutely going to embody the style trends from that time period. Sometimes it's for better or for worse, right? Like, in a way, Bratz understood the assignment. These are the most 2012 dolls to have ever existed, which is just a really unfortunate thing to be. The public's response to these were not especially varied. There was one that just said ugly, which I respect, straight to the point. There was another that said ugly as hell, which, I mean, yeah, says it all. Like, girl, what was going on in that design room? A constant reruns of Shake It Up on Disney Channel, I imagine. We also have to address the dogs. Girls, what did you do to these dogs? Why are they... Why are they radioactive? I feel like of all the dolls in the line, Jade is mostly okay. She's fine, she's got some cute jeans and a nice vest. Hard to go wrong with that, right? And the variant where she randomly has bright blue hair, also, it doesn't look that bad. Sasha definitely got the short end of the stick. Neon tutu, bright orange biker shorts with knee-high boots. Just an absolute disaster of an outfit. There was never any hope for this one. And then Chloe and Yasmin are just somewhere between really garish and really boring. And I usually do like a neon color theming, just uh, not this time. So yeah, I can't be too hard on these because again, they really were just kind of following the trends of the time. The problem is that 2012 fashion is just kind of like that, kind of ugly. They probably still could have done better, but I think number nine is maybe a fine placement for them. It feels right, I think, maybe. Number eight, which also got 3.6% of the total responses, so I guess it's technically a tie, but whatever. Bratz Fashion Pixies. Now, this one did not really surprise me at all. I already knew Fashion Pixies to be a very polarizing line. A lot of people do really like them, and a lot of people really, really hate them. From what I understand, a lot of the hate comes down to the face molds, which are not the traditional Bratz faces, but rather this smaller, more elvish sort of style. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is also the only time this head mold was ever used in Bratz, too. So, like, from a collector's standpoint, I can understand. They're definitely going to look out of place among all your other Bratz, right? And I also think this line's concept would have been just fine with the regular Bratz heads and screening, so it just feels sort of unnecessary. I don't think I personally hate the faces as much as some other people do, my issue more so comes down to the fact they're all basically wearing the same exact outfit, which is just not that interesting to me. And it's a cute outfit, don't get me wrong, I actually love a skirt over jeans moment. I, I think it's so cute, but the lack of variety just does not make for a very exciting line, and this is something Bratz did every now and then, but I feel it's, like, especially blatant here. But let's consult the public, too. 
I look at them and it just seems like a knockoff. The faces don't look right and the outfits are all almost identical. I would want a fairy slash pixie line to be more interesting, like a fictional take on each girl's fashion style. Because they spite me specifically. I've loved fairies and fantasy since I was a child, so I should love a fairy line of Bratz dolls. But I've never seen a single one that doesn't look like her face has been smashed flat. Also, why do they all have jeans? Like, I get it, they're supposed to wear modern fashions, not fairy clothes, but one of them could have had something different. So the general sentiment is that they had a very cool concept, but simply just did not do enough with it, which I can agree with. I think that's a very fair assessment, especially since this is the age of, like, Barbie, Fairytopia, and Mermaidia. So if you wanted to do fairy dolls to compete, you needed to step it up, and they simply did not do that. Number 7, which received 4.2% of the total responses. Birthday, specifically the first edition line. So for me, personally, in my very humble opinion, I think these are ranked too low. And I think it's only because they're not a very well-known line. If this was my personal list and I was going through purely what I thought were the worst Bratz lines, this would be like top 3, I think. First off, bubble skirts, and that should be enough explanation right there. But also the fact that the draw of the line, as advertised on the box, is the quote-unquote fun birthday t-shirt, which is literally a white t-shirt with some words on it. Such as Jade's incredibly iconic, always off-centered, no present for me, no cake for you shirt, and I assume the point of these is to buy to give to someone on their birthday, right? But if I was going to get a brat stall for my birthday, especially if I'm like a child, I wouldn't want these. I would want one of the hundreds of other far superior, far more well-designed dolls that are on the shelves. Uninspired and unusually tacky for brats. Yeah, tacky is a good word for these, I think. It's just a plain white shirt with some text and an ugly skirt. Pretty uninspired line. It fails to evoke a birthday vibe beyond its name. This is probably the only early 2000s line I have zero nostalgia for as an adult collecting childhood dolls. Yeah, yeah, that, that all puts it pretty well, I think. Especially since these came out in 2006, which was otherwise like a pretty strong year for Bratz. That was when Forever Diamonds came out, right? So, I mean, yeah, no, these definitely did not measure up. They definitely deserve to be on this list, but I also think they should probably be higher. Number six, coming in at 6.1% of the total responses, Bratz Eye Candy. Okay, yeah, this one actually did surprise me. I knew these were not, like, a particularly beloved or fondly remembered line, but I didn't think that they were hated. I guess if I had to complain about this line is that they are, like, literally impossible to escape on the secondhand market. I feel like every single Bratz lot for a sale has like a minimum of at least one eye candy Phoebe in it, and she's like never ever in complete condition. I also think that the theming of this line is just kind of vague, maybe, especially compared to other Bratz lines of the time. These came out in 2005, by the way, which just had extremely strong concepts, but the concept of these is just that they are colorful, I guess, sort of candy-inspired, but also not really. So it makes sense that they just don't really stand out. That said, I don't know if they're the worst. Or maybe they are. I guess the plastic painted on leggings is pretty bad, all things considered. Especially since Bratz is a doll line that really encourages redressing and mixing and matching outfits, so... Making dolls with, like, permanent fixtures like that really limits the possibilities. These dolls are hideous. Ugly screenings, tacky outfits, and awful painted legs. 
Their painted neon legs haunt my dreams. Painted leggings and just weird screenings. The colors and outfit concepts were so random and off-putting, it never gave original brats the way the other lines did. I think it's pretty easy to compare these to the Neon Runway dolls because they have very similar themes. And, hmm. I know I said the Neon Runway dolls deserve their placement, but I would maybe switch their place with eye candy on this list. Because after thinking about it, yeah, eye candy does deserve to be here. But I also think they executed what they wanted to do just slightly better than Neon Runway did. Yeah, the painted legs are, like, pretty heinous, but the clothing pieces are pretty cute. At least, like, individually, right? Number five, also with 6.1% of the total responses, duct tape fashion. This is another case where I honestly think the brats were just sort of victims of circumstance. These came out in 2014, like, you know, when bandage dresses were super in vogue, and yes, so were clothes made of duct tape. You really kind of just had to be there. I graduated high school in 2014, and I do remember a girl at my senior prom who had a dress made from patterned duct tape. It, it was a thing. But I think what works against these dolls, one, they're on that taller body, and I don't think anyone really regards the tall brats with a lot of fondness or nostalgia. And two, they're very gimmicky. Brats relied on a lot of gimmicks around this time, which was just very hit or miss, mostly miss. Because I think Bratz is best when they're just, like, a straightforward fashion doll. They don't need to be anything else because they already do that one thing so well. And I guess in theory, it's fun to have a doll with an outfit you can customize, but, like, it's tape. You, It's just tape. If you really wanted to put tape on your dolls, you can go out and buy tape and just do that. It's kind of an unnecessary thing to devote an entire line to, even if it was kind of a trend. Low-hanging fruit, but it's just such a lifeless and boring line. Truly a sign of the times for 2010's brats. I'm all for creativity, but looking back at it now, the duct tape thing didn't age well. The 2010 rebrand fascinates me. 20 plus new characters added in two years with little to no diversity was a choice, but duct tape fashion is truly the worst, like eyes are burning kind of bad. Yeah, definitely a sign of the times that did not age well, and probably wasn't even a particularly good idea when it came out. I think that sums it up pretty well. Now, number four, which got 8.5% of the total responses. The Bratz-Kylie Jenner collab. Yeah, yeah, I saw this one coming, and I completely agree. Actually, she would probably be another top three for me. And it's not even that I have anything super negative to say about the dolls. They're perfectly fine dolls. It's more that I just have ab absolutely nothing to say at all. Period. This is just such a nothing line to me. Everything about it just feels so manufactured. Like, if a doll brand is going to collab with a celebrity, I want it to be someone who embodies the brand on a very organic level. And I just do not get that impression with Kylie. Granted, I'm not a huge fan of her, I don't follow her very closely, but She's never given Bratz girl to me. I know she was known for, like, having big lips at one point, sure, but Bratz is more than just big lips. I need more to work with here. And, like, Exhibit A is the dolls. They, the looks that they chose to make into the dolls are so incredibly uninteresting to me. Even if you took off all of the Kylie Jenner branding, I would just think that these are supremely boring dolls. Sorry to all the Kylie fans, I promise it's not personal, it's just very much not for me. For the Kylie doll, that was just a huge question mark moment, and choosing to make her dolls have all black and basic clothes and then have her big doll be her met look just seems like an odd choice to make into a Bratz doll. 
They're so uninspired and boring, fashion is forgettable. It seemed like such a mistake from the brand. I still see Kylie dolls in the clearance, and it was unclear who the dolls were targeting. Were they for adult collectors or kids? Plus, a lot of the outfits they chose were bland and unimaginative. I get they were clothes she's worn, but they were so boring. Yeah, I agree, just a weird release all around, and the dolls didn't look nearly good enough to justify what felt like a very unnecessary collaboration. Number 3, which got 9.2% of the total responses, Selfie Snaps. I fully expected to see at least one line from the 2015 reboot on this list, and actually expected to see a lot more. I did get a few responses that were like, just the whole 2015 reboot in general, but this was the one that most of them specified when it came to the 2015 dolls. And I definitely see why. I think the reboot had some good moments along with the bad moments, but this was definitely by far probably one of their weakest lines. First off, even by 2015 standards, they're like horrifically dated selfie written right across the shirts. No, absolutely not. Awful. But the biggest crime is that they just don't feel like brats, which is a reoccurring issue with this generation as a whole, but these in particular just feel the least brats, the most unbrats they've ever been, if that makes sense. I sure hope it does. Ugly fashions, cheaply made, poor hair quality, the list goes on and on. The aesthetic of the dolls as a whole didn't even work back then. Horrible face printing slash molds, terrible outfits, hip with the kids trend following, array of plastic nonsense accessories, everything that makes a doll line horrible just needs an ugly pet. Yeah, I mean, this is probably the most self-explanatory entry here. I think it deserves its spot. I don't think the 2015 reboot was all bad, but this line at least, yeah, it was bad. Number two, our runner-up, which received 9.8% of the total responses, so almost one-tenth, the Rock Angels reproduction dolls. So if you weren't around, or you just weren't keeping up with Bratz news as these were released, you might be wondering, why the reproductions? What's wrong with Rock Angels? Well, it all started with the announcement. This was the first time Bratz announced that they were doing reproduction dolls at all during the revival, and it just kind of came as a disappointment for a lot of people. Because Rock Angels, yes, is a very iconic line, but it's also one that wasn't, like, very difficult to acquire. And we were all hoping that Bratz would focus on giving us dolls that were a lot more sought out by collectors. So that was strike one. But at the very least, the concept of Bratz reproductions was cool. It was nice. We were still grateful to get them. But then images started to surface online and we were all collectively like, oh, oh my god, something has gone horribly wrong. Because these dolls are not faithful reproductions of our beloved rock angels. They are, in fact, significantly uglier. And it wasn't even just that the faces were badly misprinted, because even in the stock images, they looked so wrong. They did end up delaying the release of a few of them. If I remember correctly, Roxy and Sasha, in, in order to fix their faces, but... I don't think even the release dolls got too close to looking like the original ones, so it was just a disaster all around. Just a spit in the face to the OG fans. Honestly, it made me side-eye brats as a whole. Why are their screenings so bad? Their eyes are looking in opposite directions. It's the worst one because the whole line is janky, not just one or two dolls. Sad to see them so rushed out to market that they had so many flaws in the face and the distribution. And now, the number one, as decided on by you guys, which received an extremely significant 22% of the total responses, more than double of what number two got, and more than one-fifth of the total. Bratz Babies. Which was 
very surprising to me, actually. Like, I guess I knew that not everyone liked the babies, but I did not think they were this hated. They completely overwhelmed the responses. They just generally make me uncomfortable and feel pretty unnecessary. I understand that the target audience is kids, but even as a kid, I enjoyed adult-looking dolls more than the baby versions. They are garish, uncanny, and I love them dearly, but they should never have been created. I don't like how babies and big babies yossified literal babies. It just feels really weird. I don't feel particularly strong one way or the other, I don't think. The Bratz Babies are far from my favorite Bratz products, but I don't think I hate them. I'm just not too big on baby dolls. I never was. Even when I was little, I wanted fashion dolls, never baby dolls. Which I guess that's where some of the animosity comes from. You know, if you're into Bratz, you're probably looking for a very specific sort of experience that Bratz Babies very much do not provide on account of being, you know, babies. So I see why they're here, I can see why they came to mind for so many people, but I don't know, I do think there are probably worse Bratz dolls. But yeah, there we go. The top 10 worst Bratz lines according to 200-ish random people on the internet. And now, it's your turn. Let me know if you agreed or disagreed with this list. Tell me why. Have fun, be petty, be vicious, be evil. But as always, keep it cute and keep it civil down there in the comments. What is the worst Bratz line in your opinion? I guess that's what I should ask. And also, what's the best? Maybe, maybe I should do a nicer counterpart to this video. Would you guys be into that positivity and compliments? Probably not, right? But when you're done with all that, just be sure to like and subscribe for any future fashion doll content. Thank you.